Hello, this is Welsh ASMR eighty two. Hey, how you doing? So let's get started looking at these maps of North America. We've got a couple to get through. This one here on famous landmarks. Then one on climate and wildlife. And the very beautiful at night picture. So we'll leave that one to the end, just before you fall asleep. How's that sound? Okay, let's take a look at this first one, which is famous landmarks. So, we've got Canada in the north and the USA in the southern part just creeping in and saying hola, 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 is Mexico, of course. Okay, so what we can see here, up in the northeast, the United States are, um, and some Canada, so United, these are Canada, United States. So the very famous Statue of Liberty in New York, looking further north we've got Nova Scotia in Canada, and the Lunenburg Church, looks very beautiful. In Quebec City, the Chateau Frontenac. Again, another absolutely stunning building. Lance aux Meadows. Or oh, Lance aux Meadows. It's sort of half French and half English. So this is Newfoundland. Just out of shot is Greenland. So I won't include that this time. And then you've got the CN Tower in Toronto, in Canada. And going around, we've got Niagara Falls, both on the United States and Canadian sides of the border. Let's stay east but go further south. The White House is in Washington, D.C. Poverty Point in Louisiana. Then we've got the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I've actually been there when I was a kid. The Gran Teatro in Cuba. Cuba. It's just before we leave the shot. Actually, they've left some nice information about the White House. It says, built between 1792 and 1800, it is the official residence of the US president. And again, just off shot, there's a little bit of information about Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls is the collective name for three waterfalls that straddle the Canada-United States border. The largest, the Horseshoe Falls, has an average drop of 57 meters or 188 feet. Down here in Mexico, you can just see the Chichen Itza Pyramid. And they did include the one in Honduras just below it as well. The Copan. Okay, the Alamo in Texas. I did a little drawing video of Texas for you recently. I hope you enjoyed it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check it out on my channel. 
Then we have Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. It's all United States now. Chaco Canyon, New Mexico. Hoover Dam is here. It crosses Nevada and Arizona states. Just right at the bottom here is the Hollywood sign in Los Angeles, California. Right next to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Fran. Before we hit the Redwood National Park in still in California. In Wyoming, we've got the old, faithful, I want to say, Giza. And then lastly in the United States, the Space Needle in Seattle. That's not <laughs> to scale, incidentally. And then in British Columbia, Canada, the Nin Stints. We can also see the bow. I want to say bow, not bow. The bow in Calgary, Canada. Just here. Just north of the border with the United States. Going back briefly to the Chichen Itza in Mexico, there's a blurb, let me read it. The largest and most famous Mayan site, Chichen Itza, Mexico, was a major urban center between 750 and 1200 CE. The highlight of the site is the El Castillo Pyramid, whose four sides are made up of 365 steps, one for each day of the solar year. How could they have possibly known? Conspiracy theory, insert comment here. <laughs> okay, that was fun. So those are the famous landmarks. Let's now take a look at the climate, shall we? So off the bat, we can see that it's obviously warmer in the southern part, milder in the central and northern, and then much colder at the top. The coldest inhabited place is Prospect Creek Camp in Alaska, the United States. Um, it's the coldest inhabited place in North America. On the 23rd of January, 1971, the, uh, the thermometer there tumbled to minus 62.2 degrees Celsius, which is minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowest temperature ever recorded in North America, however, is minus 63 minus 81.4 Fahrenheit at Snag, Yukon in Canada on the 3rd of February 1947. Just here it says, on average, over 1,000 tornadoes are recorded in the United States every year. At the top here, it says annual precipitation, so that's rain and snow. North America receives moderate amounts of precipitation, snow and rain, compared to other continents. The wettest areas are the west coast of Canada, the extreme northwest of the United States, and parts of Central America and the Caribbean. 
the central part of Greenland is covered by a permanent ice cap. So we've got the warmer climate down here in Miami, in Florida, Houston, in Texas. <laughs> Look at me knowing of these. We are getting used to this. Las Vegas. Oh God, I can't remember the state. It's not New Mexico, is it? Los Angeles, California, San Fran, California as well. And then just, just, you can see the numbers. That's where Mexico City is, La Ciudad de México. Merida is on the peninsula here. Heaviest rainfall is dotted here. The most rain to fall in 24 hours in North America was 1,633.98 millimeters, otherwise 64.3 inches, in Isla Mujeres, Mexico, on the 21st to the 22nd of October, 2005. Ah, I see. So the dark number is the average hours of sunshine in January, and that is in July, so Little Rock. I immediately went to say Utah, but that's not where Utah is. Little Rock, wherever you are. Five hours of sunlight in January compared to ten in the summer. New York is the same, five and ten as is Winnipeg in Manitoba, Canada. Calgary is actually 12 hours of sunlight. Oh my word, but just above it, look at that. Fort Vermilion. In January it gets one hour of sunlight. And in July, 10. Although bizarrely, Churchill gets three hours of sunlight and then nine in July. Resolute. I think you have to be pretty resolute. In January there are z zero hours of sunlight and you only get nine in July. Same with copper mine. Anchorage in Alaska though is a bit better. Three hours compared to eight in the summer. Vancouver, the wettest, Henderson Lake, British Columbia, Canada, received an average of 7 metres or 276 inches of rain and snow when measurements were taken between 1923 to 35 and 1998 to 2000. Okay, we said the lowest temperature was in Snag in Yukon, the coldest in a inhabited place was in Prospect Creek Camp, the highest temperature ever recorded in North America is 56.7 degrees Celsius or 134 degrees Fahrenheit in Death Valley, California, USA on the 10th of July, 1913. It's nearly a hundred years ago now. Las Vegas actually gets eight hours of sunshine in January and 13 in July. Denver, seven versus 11. I think Tony is the winner. Oh my God, that's so weird. So Mexico City, just here. So that's eight hours of sunshine in January, but only six hours of sunshine in July. I've got a very northern hemisphere concept when it comes to daylight hours. For me, the thought of it's sh having more sunshine in January is bizarre. Okay. 
rocks are the driest areas just out of shot here in Baja California, the, the part of Mexico which comes off from California in the United States and goes down into a peninsula. This is Batagir in Baja California, Mexico. It's the driest place in North America. It receives just 3.5 millimeters or 1.2 inches of rain per year. It's unbelievable. And again, out of shot at the top, the windiest place is Mount Washington in New Hampshire, United States. There was a gust of 372 kilometers per hour, or 231 miles per hour, recorded there on the 12th of April, 1934. And the little marks here are for Tornado Alley. All my viewers watching from that area of the world will know what that means. It's a nickname given to an area in the southern United States that experiences a high number of tornadoes. A tornado is a column of air that spins at high speed while maintaining contact with both the ground and the storm clouds above. This area around Sioux City, Little Rock and Denver. Let's take a little look at the wildlife. So way up north here in Canada, we've got the musk ox. Um, apparently getting its name from the strong odour, the musk, that it emits during rutting season. <laughs> nice. Uh, the snowy owl. An unusual owl because it actually hunts by day. The ringed seal. The seal can hold its breath underwater for 45 minutes. The American bison. North America's largest land mammal can weigh up to 1,000 kilograms. The American black bear. Short, non-retractable claws make it an excellent tree climber. I'd be terrified if I ever bumped into a bear in North America. Oh my goodness. We don't have anything in Britain that's that anywhere near that big. I think the biggest natural thing we have is um, a deer. Or a, yeah. And they run away when they hear you, so. Uh, the harbour seal, just out of shot. This common seal slows its heartbeat when swimming underwater. The star-nosed mole. Nose tentacles help this mole identify food. How weird. Oh my god, the picture's bizarre. Can I zoom in for you? Oh, I don't know if you can see the nose. Ugh. Anyway. What sort of mammal has tentacles up his nose. Okay, when I think of North America, I think of this, the raccoon. I've watched videos on YouTube because to us they are incredibly cute. But I've seen them as pets and they basically <laughs> destroy people's houses. They just go into the cavity walls and punch holes everywhere, ruin the house. Dexterous front paws help this mammal snatch fish from rivers and pick snacks from bins. Out. The river otter, webbed feet and sleek body make this playful animal an excellent swimmer. The antelope, the fastest land mammal in North America, can reach speeds of 88.5 kilometers or 
55 miles per hour that is over the speed limit on many US roads you could set off some speed cameras in the UK over here we've got the Stella sea lion the largest sea lion species male bulls can be 1000 kilograms so basically the same as a bison that's incredible that thing swims at least I assume so. The Arctic ground squirrel, squirrel, I can't say, Arctic ground squirrel, doubles its weight during the summer to prepare for a seven month hibernation in Alaska. I love a goat. Dal, oh, it's a sheep. Dal sheep. The sheep has thick, curled horns that stop growing in the winter. Wolves, I. I appreciate if you're in the wild, a wolf would be terrifying to come across, but because I'm a dog lover, they look so, I don't know what's the word, gorgeous. A grey wolf. Wolf pairs can track prey for up to 80 kilometres, that's 50 miles. Yeah, I, I think they are attractive animals, but I appreciate how utterly terrifying it would be to come across one. Elk. Male elk clash antlers in battle for mating rights. Yeah, the antelope and the elk are still way bigger than our deer. The beaver, another, I think, along with the bison um, and the raccoon. I think a beaver really sort of says America to me. Powerful jaws help this rodent fell trees and build dams in deep water. I read that fact somewhere that um, humans and beaver are the two species that affect their environment the greatest. Uh, striped skunk, I suppose. That's another one that I highly associate with America. You can't, I mean, I'm not sure you get them anywhere else. Or maybe you do. This mammal's foul-smelling oil can be smelt up to 1.6 kilometers or one mile away. Oh my word. Coyote. A nocturnal canine that will eat whatever it finds. Rattlesnake. Highly venomous. This snake grows new rattle segments when it sheds its skin. Over here we got the lemon shark, a stocky shark that lives in groups in t tropical coastal waters, just off the coast of Miami and uh, Florida here. Actually, Miami's that side, it's not that side really. Um, American alligator, this extremely territorial and powerful predator, can be 4 meters or 13 feet long. Prairie dog, a rodent that lives in underground towns on grassland. Venturing into Mexico now. The bighorn sheep. The horns of a male can weigh more than its whole skeleton. And just about in shot is the golden eagle. North America's largest bird of prey can reach sheep speeds of 300 what? No way. 320 kilometers an hour, which is 200 miles per hour for us Brits, in a vertical dive. 200 miles an hour, that's unbelievable. And just here's the great white shark. A streamlined swimmer with powerful jaws that contain seven rows of knife-like teeth. see down in Mexico here, the olive ridley sea turtle, a solitary open ocean dweller. Females return to land to lay eggs. Okay. I don't think I missed any. Apologies if I did. Let's look at the final section then on map of you 
of North America by night. So, when it's black, it's dark, and there's no one living there, or very few people. So we can see with Canada and Alaska, the population density is very low, compared to the eastern seaboard of the United States, rolling inland. Again, a much sparser density of population until we reach the coast with California and Seattle up here. I assume these areas here are um, Calgary and Winnipeg maybe. And then over here we've got places like Toronto, Ottawa and Quebec and the Great Lakes region. major areas. This is the Great Lakes. Towns and cities frame the shores of the Great Lakes which are clearly visible in this image. You can see this sort of part here and there. The District of Columbia is here. As you can see it's very very bright. Over 600,000 people live in an area of just 177 square kilometers. That's 68 square miles. There's a little box up here on Canada. I'm going to read it to you. Canada, despite its vast size, only the Russian Federation is larger. Almost 90% of Canada is unhabitable. Uninhabitable. What did I say? <laughs> uninhabitable. The cold temperatures in the country's frozen north are too extreme for humans to live there. California says the Los Angeles, Long Beach, Anaheim area is the most densely populated region in the United States. And then for Mexico, it's pointing down to Mexico City. Over half the country's 123.2 million population live in a small band of land in the center of the country. So, I could actually show you this. Hang on. There. Because I think you should appreciate that despite having a large population, they're very um, urban, they're, they're located in urban areas rather than rural areas. So here we can see Texas. I recognize the area from the video I did last weekend. So I'm assuming like must be Dallas. And then we've got Florida down here. Um, I'm trying to remember my locations. Miami. Which side is Miami? Is Miami that side? Orlando possibly is up here. Or oh, is Miami down there? I forget. Um, and then obviously United States, um, we've got New York up here, the District of Columbia is um, more or less where DC is, right? So between DC and New York, we have the brightest area here of the entire map. I think that's the most beautiful image. So I'm going to close this video whilst we look at that and take the
the opportunity to remind you to press like and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you and I always respond to every message I get. If you're new to the channel and you love maps, then you should really be subscribing and clicking the bell to get notifications. I upload at least one, sometimes two, map videos a week on this channel, many of which are on North America, but also anywhere else in the world. So check out the channel. Welcome. Big thank you to my subscribers and on my other channel, my language channel, Welsh ASMR82, big thank you to my channel supporters and my patrons. If you'd like to join either, then follow links in the box, the info box to find out how, as well as a little thing called Ko-Fi, meaning that if you really enjoyed this video and you want to drop me a dollar tip, then you can do if you want. Just follow the instructions in the link or in the pinned message below. Okay. I'm going to leave you to, to go to sleep. Thanks ever so much for watching. I really appreciate it and all of your support. Thanks so much everyone.